The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Hi, everyone. Basil Chapman for Steve. I'm sitting in for Steve Rhodes, but it's not Mastering Probability. It's the host of the Tiger Technicians Hour and the opening call and the Chapman Wave. So this is uh, what I want to look at right here. In the Chapman Wave, we try to identify the lowest low bar, count each successively, successive higher peak, alphabetize them, uppercase on the way up, lowercase on the way down, on the way up, it's way more important than on the way down, although I do notate on the way down it has a different meaning. But in this particular case, as soon as it gets upgraded from a buy signal to a buy mode, it means at least four higher peaks. At the fourth highest peak, peak D, A, B, C, D, other things that have got nothing to do with A to B equals C to D, absolutely nothing. Just as I notated the Chapman wave A, B, C, D, because at the time, Elliot Prattler was talking about uh, um, one, two, threes and all sorts of different things like that in the Elliot wave, which I, I sort of studied. I never quite got it. I'm much more conversant with it today. I also refer to an expert that I know down on Cape Cod. Uh, and, uh, but I use Chapman wave and that just counts the peaks to the upside, it's your only obligation, and counts the troughs, and then looks at different patterns. But it can go to E, F, and G. Uh, G is the seventh, sixth highest, sorry, G is the seventh highest peak, um, and never an H. And so we don't have to get to that, but D is where other things can happen. Look, here's the, the crude oil, went to peak F, and it's broken out. Now, what is this? Is this a G, a continuation, or is this a brand new A? If it's an A, that is extremely positive for the uh, for the crude oil market. If it's a G, it says, whoops, be careful, cup formation, we can break out. Uh, so we can break back into the into the cup formation. So I'll talk about that just to say that this is really important um, in the general market right now because if crude starts to break and you know I, I just read a story about uh, our inventories are, are low we've been using our our reserves I mean in a country like this to be using reserves you've got to think of the country what happens if uh, you know uh, what happens if we need the oil and we've run out of reserves it's just there's something wrong with that picture so i'm not, i'm kind of upset about that but in the meantime back at the ranch what we're all looking at is <clears throat> within the context of the markets let me just give you a brief overview of what i'm looking at here indu so the dow we were short the dow right at the day of the top using chapman wave techniques at august the first uh, 35679 was the high um it came down very sharply to the 34,029 level, and then it rebounded, and it's rebounded pretty nicely. We've got a Chapman Wave falling axe formation. We've gone out of that. That's a declining uh, cone, expanding cone. But it looks to me like we're starting to falter right here. But the weekly chart, the nine period moving average over the 14, I don't want to go into too much of that now. I did that in my show, uh, the Tiger Technicians Hour, this previous hour. Uh, 10 to 11 every day. And my service is the opening call daily newsletter. Now look at this. Um, the S&P, at this particular point, the S&P is giving back all of the gains of the morning. Uh, it's up 4.73 because the futures were up earlier on. Uh, but it's, this is still a pretty decent pattern. Look, the MACDs, he has the MACD, moving average convergence, divergence, histograms positive. He has the stochastic at 86%. That's good, 85%. Nine period over the 14, love that. But it's starting to stall. Is it just a stall or we're beginning September on a very shaky note? Well, the weekly chart in the S&P is still extremely strong. We've got an alternate count, G stash D, because we had a Chapman Wave instant restart at that peak D, where within three bars, you make a new recovery high. You use an alternate count, and the GC can always go to a higher peak D. Now, let's go back to the story here. And the monthly chart is finished. Monthly chart did very well, but this is a peak C in the monthly chart. 
the former peak D gets eliminated if this thing does not make a, a go to a new 48.18.6 to all time high. But instead, this month sneaks just above the high that was made of 45.07.07 um, in August to a D and then fails. Because once that D is in place, that's where other things can happen. Could be it's the only index that didn't make a, a top uh, D, E, or F, or G in the Chapman Wave methodology. So with that said, uh, let's go on to the uh, other. The QQQ has gone negative. Uh, down a point at 377. We get that turned around. But the technicals are actually pretty good. It's 91% in the stochastic. The quicker that the stochastic goes back under 80%, the more trouble there is. If it holds here, that's actually quite good. The weekly chart is still good. That's the index 100 in VESCO QQQ Trust Series. Let me just get out of that. And IWM, IWM, the Russell 2000, doing very nicely compared to the others, but it very often plays catch up and then it stalls. That's what we often see in gold. Gold right now is down a fraction. At 1965.7, I said yesterday, Although we are long a, a stock in the, in the uh, gold silver sector, um, we had said that this 200 period moving average in the, in the gold contract, continuous contract, is going to be a stalling formation. Talk about the importance of the 200 period moving average. Look at this. This is the look at that 200 period moving average. Look how it was a springboard for that big move up in the 10 minute E mini chart. Now it's repellent zone of 45.24. We're underneath. The 4530 level that I was talking about that became an incredible support level. Now we're making another dreaded H pattern. What's the dreaded H? This is the pattern right here where the price comes down sharply, straight line down, and then rolls over. Straight line down, rolls over, takes out the left side low. It looks like an H pattern. Uh, and usually it's at a peak A or B. That's where you've got to be careful. If you take out the left side low after that, and I use the Chapman Wave Phantom Peak. If you want to know all about this, I did that in my show, uh, The Tiger Technicians Hour, how I use the Phantom Peak. If we never used that Phantom Peak, we would still be waiting for a leg D. So that gave us perfectly an exit strategy. All right. So with that said, just enough of all that. A lot of questions came in about particular stocks. Let me get to that up right here. So I'm, as I wrote them down, I'm just going to go. So this one wasn't necessary. This was for me. Could I look at CX? <clears throat> CX is CMAX. Uh, come, this is the uh, uh, Mexican cement company. It went to that peak D. Remember, peak D is where other things can happen. It can go to an E or even an F or G, but this is where other things can happen. You have to be careful. Look at that D sharp pullback. I think this is look at Doji candle. This is telling me that we've got to be September is going to be a tough month. I think. That's the way I'm looking. That's why we've kept our short position in the Dow. We've kept our short position in the SMHs um, for just off the high, about a point or so off the off the high. And I I, th I feel that choppiness is 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 really what we're looking at. Even though there are some stocks that have done extremely well. So CX um, holding very well. It hasn't turned negative yet, but I think it's going to get to 750 over the next week. I'll be back in a moment. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors 
You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the Opening Call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education. Investors. Call, call, call now. Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 873 Probability. I'm going to go to our caller. We've got Mike in Ormond Beach. Mike, how are you? That's why I'm doing great, and thanks again for all the substitute work you do for TFNN. It's great that you put all that time in to help us. My pleasure. It's something I love to do. That's what keeps me going. So what would you like to look at? Okay, Basil, I'm looking at GDX, and from the August 21 low, to me it looks like we made a peak B, and um, it looks like the 50-day... SMA is acting as a little bit of resistance. Correct, exactly, um, yes. Now, what? I mean, what do you think? Do you think we have a good chance to get to a peak D with this? So or I believe it was it was eyeballs that was uh, t telling me yesterday, and I forgot, I think it was, that said that there was a round number high and the GDX, which was at $30, city round number high. So I like yes. to look at and and the question was, what, what do you do with a round number like that? Well, for me, it's real simple. 30 becomes a really important level um, as resistance, but actually it's the 30.30 .30 level at the 200-period moving average. Now, let's go through a couple of things. I changed the color because the peak A is a gray A, I've still only got a plus sign underneath. I usually make that red, a plus sign under the trough E that was made on the on the uh, 21st of August at 27.28. So percentage-wise, we're over two points high. So it's about nine, eight, eight almost nine percent. Well. Um, the stochastic did go over 80% to 81%. The quicker that the, S, the uh, stochastic can start to go into the 83 or higher area, the better that this is going to be. But as it stands right now, I haven't got a, an up arrow. I haven't got confirmation. I have to wait about another day. And one of the reasons is the... On balance volume is very weak. I'm not getting the volume follow through here with with the on on balance volume. That's the blue line. The relative mm -hmm. strength is still pretty good, just at about fifty percent. So as a one of the things I've been talking about is, you know, I looked at the weekly chart of the Dow, the S and P, the Qs. The the weekly charts based on the nine period moving average over the fourteen are still really strong, and that's 
one of the reasons why I've still said that the dollar has internal strength. You cannot fight it at this particular point. It could roll over like the Dow took nine or eight or ten sessions or something to go from the peak that was made August the 1st to the to the nine period moving average roll over to the downside. We might see something like that in the dollar, but it hasn't happened yet. And I'm looking at this, and I have to put this together, you see, because I have to tie it together with gold. Now, this is the gold miners market vectors index. Um, uh, and this is the gold got repelled at the 200 period moving average. So they're both telling me the same story, even though the, the stochastic on gold is at 86%. MACD is good, nine periods over the 14. The way that the it's being repelled, it says to me, it hasn't yet got that follow through. Uh, the, the, the tenacity, just to, I don't know yet because this is just the second day. Well, this is not the second day. We haven't even had, we had a one day rest in the gold before the high of today and the reversal from 1980.2 in the continuous contract. But what I was really looking at is that that weekly chart making lower lows and lower highs and the dreaded H um, failed at a peak A on the week of the 21st of July went to a lower low. Yes, it's got back within two bars above that, uh, that low that was made on the week of the 30th of June at 1940. So I'm just seeing this as a process because that monthly chart says it's holding well, but think of it, and let me just draw this in here, this rectangle formation that I joined in some time ago and said, look, the bulk <laughs> of trading in the gold contract itself has been with b between like 2000 and say 10 and 1890 and it's just stuck there but it's holding well it's not breaking down when you think of what happened to the dollar gold really should have tanked and it hasn't and that's just saying to me that countries big big money and i i might be wrong about this completely but i like to put in the back of my mind a little i put little uh nuggets together and see if I can oh, go nuggets. I didn't mean nuggets, nuggets. I just mean <laughs> little parcels of information. So look at this, the XLE. And I always think that gold and the financial markets go together. Uh, so not the XLE, I'm, I'm going to go to that next, the XLF. Look how lousy this is. The XLF is actually trading sideways. It almost looks like gold in the week, in the monthly chart. So it's not really doing very much, although today it's up 30 cents. So I see this as big countries go to gold when they get very nervous. So gold is the is the icon for fear, just as the VIX index is, a, is the icon for fear in the general stock market. That's one thing. There are other things that play as well. Silver has a, a component uh, that is really a practical usage. Um, gold doesn't quite have that. So when I put it together, I'm just saying, I need the evidence, even though we are long a, a silver stock in the, in, for subscribers to the opening call because it's acted better than gold. So let's go back to your question, GDX. So do you have a position in the GDX? Well, Basil, all I've been doing, I've been trading very cautiously. I, I have an account that's a day trading account, and I trade on very small time frames. And I'd rather take many small bites than trying to get one big bite. <laughs> okay. You see, I I don't. As long as you know your uh, your modus operandi and you stick to us, that's the only way. Because the moment you start to deviate from that, it takes certain. It takes a practice. It takes practicing to to get the next step right. So I like what right. you're saying. So if you're looking at the short term, let's just call it swing trading for the moment. It might not be because it's day trading. So intraday, it could still be swing trading because you're going from point to point and you're taking off whenever you feel ready to take off or you add on. In this particular right. instance, you see the pullback that we've got today. There's nothing wrong with this. That's the reason why I'm saying stochastic at 81%. I'm not going to fight this. I'm just saying. I don't know if it's ready for prime time just yet. That's really what I'm saying. And if you compare yeah. it to, say, SLV, the silver chart, which is pulling back quite sharply today, down 17 cents at 22.22, after it made the peak D. And the peak D is under the previous peak C. This is almost representative of what we're going to be looking at in the S&P if it makes a peak D under the previous peak B. It's almost the same thing. And that just says when I see a failure below the previous high, I get a little cautious. 
and the stochastics at 85% in the SLV, that's the Silver iShares Trust. And it's just pulling back. It's still the nine, it's still way over the 14. So I think treating it first as a trading vehicle the, is going to give you a sense of how it's holding. And all I can say is if at this time next week, Friday next week, let's look at the weekly chart. If the weekly chart is actually closing, <clears throat> there's a downtrend line. And the downtrend line by next week will be at about 30.67. That doesn't sound like much. It's only $1.50. So if it's starting to go towards that level, if it's taken out 30.30, which is the daily 200 period moving average, that's going to be good. Right now, I just think we've got enough resistance. Let's look at it again Tuesday, but I think treating it with some caution is exactly appropriate right now. Hope that helps you. Okay. Yes, thank you. Have Dad. a great weekend. Speak to you soon. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Bowser Chapman sitting for uh, Steve Rhodes. Our XLE, a question came in, S&P Select, Energy Spider Fund. <clears throat> this looks like crude oil. Look, you've got your cup formation. You've got the Chapman Wave instant restart. But this is very interesting. I didn't want to write this in because I needed to study, study a little bit more and to see if we did break your new recovery high, which we've done. So this here 
is what's called Chubb Wave Instant Restart. But if it goes to E, which is always an alternate count, E slash E, the next high is F slash B, then G slash C, there's never an H, so it has to be a D. We did all that. However, I normally, I don't know if I want to do this because I just don't see it right now, but I'm going to do it. This low right here, and I'm just at the moment, just for the moment, I'm not, I'm not going to take the time to do a left side, right side price time match. That's the bar symmetry where the price should be. Says that the XLE, Select Energy Spider Fund, it doesn't give you a time because it stretches out with this kind of pattern. It's called the Chapman Wave Unconventional Flat Base Restart. Not just the instant restart, but it's a flat base restart. Not just a flat base restart, but an unconventional one. Because the price keeps coming, no matter how high it gets, it just keeps coming back down. And what's the level that we're looking at is 80, 84.60. So I'll type in 84.60. Here we are way higher. We're up in the 90 area, 84.60. But this particular pattern, now I, I, I got to do a little bit of more work, but I'm going to put this in and I'll, I'll type it in, in pink, Chapman Wave, un conventional flat base is a lot of words but it explains the whole technique base restart to 84s wow i don't know i i put this in sometimes and i forget about it and then i come back and i look and i say oh my goodness it really did work it's very difficult to identify but if you get used to the Chapman methodology, it's just another variation of the very same thing we're always looking at. So let me just do this, and then I'll make it nice and tiny so it's not interfering with my visuals of the moment. Uh, and then I will uh, to 84s. All right, so I'm not even going to put that in. I'm just taking that out because I want to get this. Okay, so this is very interesting because what it says is at some point we're going to bump into resistance and have just, for whatever reason it is, a sudden slide. I'm not interested in right now. What I'm interested in is, what is the letter? Well, this becomes a gray A. This became a gray B until it broke to a new high. So this becomes E slash B. This, is, this sounds so complicated, but it really, I'm just, it's really very simple. It's just following the sequence. And I'll like C in the weekly, and the technicals in the weekly look is flat, stochastic, is fabulous. That's what you want to see. The week, the monthly chart is walking the nine, the 14 and nine period moving averages looking great. So the energy sector looks like there's still upside to come. At some point, we'll have a turnaround. I'm not interested in the turnaround because this is a very complex thing. It reminds you of Bart Simpson's hairstyle, spiky, spiky, spiky. But each one of those spikes at some point starts to deteriorate the technicals and then it comes tumbling down. The unbalanced volume is a little bit overboard, but that we'll see what happens. So right now, the preference is to call it E, but maybe it's a B. E says, got to be a little careful. B says, oh, you, what are you talking about? You want to buy every dip. Well, there's nothing to do. It's walking the nine-period moving average. As long as this is strong, that's fine. So energy XLE is broken out to a new recovery high, that's what I wanted to say. Next question came in. Could I look at? Um, yeah, I did that. Did that. Uh, it, I don't know if it was asking to look at it, but I did see someone. I wrote it down. S A B R. Yeah, Sabre Corporation travel site stores uh, flight coupons for airlines. Um, there's the 200 period moving average. It keeps coming back. It's almost like an instant restart, flat base restart, because it keeps coming back to this level. Leg B and peak B in the weekly. I looked at this because it showed up in my screamer list. It's only at five dollars and twenty cents. It's up twenty cents today when uh, a lot of the markets have started to pull back from the highs. But it looks like it's sideways. And look, remember the pattern we were looking at before? Straight line down, arch formation, fails at a peak A. Right here, peak A. Hasn't failed yet. It's held its left side low. And here's a second. So here's your first arch right there. I'll just make it big and then make it smaller later. Here's your first arch. Here's your second arch. 
if this, because it's holding so well, is able with the nine period moving average still good, if it's able to, and then every peak gets counted. So this is an A right here. This is another A. These should be gray A's. I'm not going to change the color right now. So the question is, look how nicely the weekly is holding. Monthly is just horrible. So we've got to forget about that. That's months. That's uh, Each bar is a month. Here each, each bar is a week. Here each bar is a day. So this is the one we're looking at. And so far, it's holding well. But I don't see yet, oh, there should be an uppercase A. I don't yet see a strength. So um, I would just keep it in mind. If, you are, if you're in a starter position, that's okay, because it's holding quite well. Most importantly, what I'm going to say to you is this. If the 200 period moving average of $4.84, if I'm reading, yeah, $4.84, that's key. A close in the next week, any day that it closes under $4.80, I'd just be real careful. And that's also going to tell me that that whole sector, and let's see what Expedia is doing, EXP. Is that E? Whoops. Is that right? Uh, EXPE. Expedia. Yeah, stalling formation. Almost the same pattern. Look, there's an A. It failed. It's, 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 it's slipping from that A. Uppercase on the way up. Here's your A and there's a B. It's just holding. It's like a magnet is holding it back. This 200 period moving area. Yeah, I, I just say hold off a little bit. I'm not sure I want to get into travel at this particular point. I think people are going to start slowing down with their travels. Um, so that's that. Next question came. Oh, here we go. Apple. So Apple has had a really nice bounce. First of all, it made this arch formation, the dreaded H, right there from the peak D top at 198.29 back in July. Broke that at a peak A minus. It was a little messy. I'll put it in now because I'm discussing it. A minus. Took out the left side low and then gapped down and plunged. And it went all the way down to the 174 level. 100 and, sorry, 71.96. 171.96, and now the MACD is really strong at 971.96. The MACD is very strong. The stochastic is beautiful at 94%. On balance volume is rallying, but it's not overboard. And the 9 has gone over the 14. And that's what I'm saying. There's a mixed market here. Look at this, this beautiful up channel. It broke the up channel. And now it's trying to test the, the, the resistance level. Mm, I'll talk about that. This is the reason why I'm saying it's a bifurcated market. Bifurcated, quadruple bifurcated market. It's a real mixed market. I'll be back. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. 
first-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. DFNN.com. Educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. That makes me just, uh, it's exactly what I, I said to subscribers. We don't want to see that. Well, if you are short, you don't mind seeing that. If you're long, the indexes themselves, it's just, you don't really want to see that today because yesterday was a failure pattern as well. And it's just saying that there are some heavy hitters here that are taking profits very quickly. All right, just got that out of the way. Most importantly, let me do this. So Microsoft, I just I need to clarify one thing. SLV, the silver ETF, has pulled back sharply, but it's just a normal retracement after a peak D. There's nothing wrong with it, but I'm looking at the weekly chart and was really important in this dreaded H, second H pattern to form the cup and within by Tuesday, i give it another day, by Wednesday afternoon, Thursday morning, this pattern has to rectify itself because otherwise it weekly just gets stuck. If this weekly had closed this this Friday, day's young. I don't think it's going to happen, but the day is still young. Um, above 23.16, no, it just has to go above 23.16, preferably close, but even just going above it would say, wow, now we're looking at something different. You'll start to see the MACD actually start to cross positive. The nine period moving average is a little bit positive today for the first time, but it needs more than that. It needs to expand. The aperture needs to expand between the 14 and the nine period moving average. It is holding the nine in the green nine in the in the uh, in the daily charts. I just need a refresh to say the fact that we got to the D doesn't mean it's the end of the world. When you're coming off a low, you're going to get to a D. As the tide rides, rises, you're going to get that, and then you recycle to another one, etc. But I am very cautious about this because it needs to prove itself. The stocks, in fact, not all the stocks in the gold and silver did very well. Some of them actually gave back. So it's a work in progress, and I do, I like I like to think that going to the late September, beginning of October er period, that's where the dollar actually starts to take a breather and the market actually starts to move much higher. So this is kind of what I'm looking at. So that just says to me, we might be stuck in this range for a little while, but not bad action. It's just not... I, it's not the follow through that I wanted. Okay, it gets back to and Microsoft. Microsoft, you see, who did I have yesterday? Garo called. I, I've got to write it down. Garo called, and we were looking at what stock, and I said, oh, Square. So let me get to that with, after Microsoft. Microsoft, um, look at peak D in the weekly. Now the nine period moving average is getting closer and closer. And this is a second D. This is not an instant resale. This is a brand new. So this should have been a down arrow. It did the price, the beautiful time price cup formation and broke out. And then this has to be an up move. Now what we're looking at is this is a peak D with a, this uh, almost a hammer-like candle, uh, evening star type candle. And now it's come down. 
And that nine, look, the MACD is weak. Stochastic's way down at 22%. This is losing power. And the monthly chart vertical from 349 high of November 2021 to the most recent high of uh, in the 360s, look at this. The technicals are holding okay, but they're not as good as they were. So it just says that monthly chart, nothing yet wrong with it, nothing yet wrong with the weekly, but be careful because it looks like this pop didn't break to a leg B. It's stalling right here. And the MACD and Stochastic, they all rose, but the price stalled. I don't like stalling action. So that's it. Now, one of the things I wanted to talk about was <clears throat> uh, within the context of, what did I say? Oh, Square. Let's see where Square is. And I said to Garrow, yes, the uh, parabolic SAR was working, but the price wasn't even recognizing it. So where is Square today? Square's holding quite nicely, made a higher high, and yesterday did dip. But look at, look at the struggle going on here. Um, it's up 42 cents at 58.07. So on, I know he likes to do this uh, on a intraday basis, looking out a couple of days and then he's out. But in the meantime, the SAR has still, is still positive. The MACD is positive. Stochastic's risen a little bit from yesterday. It's up at 38%. I'm not seeing the price movement. It wants to do it, but it's not doing it. It's still more stuck in the rectangle formation. So I just wanted to review that to say in the analysis that he did, I know it went a little lower yesterday than I was looking for. I said at 50, it went to 57.17. I think I'd be real careful, I said, if it goes to 57.20, what it went under there. But now it's actually went to 59.04 inch a day, trading at 58.02. So in this particular, it's a work in progress. I think it's going to take a little more time before you start to see a trade in the 62s. That's the way I'm looking at it right now. I, it's one that is on my list is it going to be a buy at some point? I, at this particular point, I'm stepping aside from these. Um, uh, question came in. Where was it? I think. Uh, I want to just check. Uh, what is what's SPR? People are talking about SPR, but I'm not sure what SPR is. Can I look at TLT? Oh, I didn't do that. Yes, absolutely. I didn't do it in my show either. I mentioned it. And then for, I did bonds, but I forgot to do it. Yeah, so the TLT, the nine period moving average went positive for a day. Now it's negative in, in the daily. The weekly chart never even thought about going positive. It's just been ready. Look at the price movement in this arch formation that goes to the lowercase h, goes to a lowercase m, takes out the left side low, and goes much lower. That 91.85 level is imperative to monitor. The low of the week of... Uh, <clears throat> Uh, the week of uh, October the 28th, 91.85 was the low in the iShares 20-year Treasury bond ETF. Now uh, we've tested 92.23 last week, but look, the stochastics at 14%. The on-balance volume is oversold, but that's the only thing I talk about is being oversold and overbought. <clears throat> and it's trying to bounce, and it just can't get out of its own way. The um, nine period moving average is just so much below the 14 to get this even positive at some point. We'll see 150 to 180 before it actually even thinks about turning positive. So this just says that the higher yields theme. Now, let's just go to the TNX, TNX.X. That's, that's the 10 year um, having a bounce. It made a peak F slash B top. Uh, about two weeks ago. That was a leg E. It's going to be a peak E today with a beautiful left side, right side, time match. Well, it was beautiful to this exact low right here. So sometimes, whoops, I should have moved it over one. I didn't do that with the TLT, but I did it with the TBT. This is the exact plumb line, the midpoint. Isn't it amazing the number of bars to the left side and the number of bars to the right side it was two weeks early, three weeks early, and it took out the left side 43.33 high. Now it's pulled back. But look, all the technicals, the 9 is way above the 14. The price is above the 9. This is the green is the 9, 14. And the, that's the 9, the 14 is the black beard moving. The magnet is good. Stochastic's flat at 88% in the weekly chart. I just have to tell you, this is something that says to me, um, oh, and what is that? That's a leg E in the monthly chart. 
those yields are just relentless. They do not want to come down. So the 10 year is holding well. Oh, draw in the falling axe in a moment. Okay, we've got a break coming up. Uh, Bowser Chubb is sitting for, oh my goodness. Oh, going red or red. Oh, it just went red. Uh, the Dow went red. I'll be back. Oh, we'll see you. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. back to finish up uh, the huge hour he's away um i wanted to do this i had it already i've done these all of these this is investors business daily ibd stocks clh elf dkng li dlo just a whole bunch of i've notated almost all of them um i i did it all by hand uh, nothing's automated because there are just those variations that you need to see look at this one to one from the 200 period moving average in the 10 minute chart right here we need to find some kind of support and look when it turned pink that nine period moving average we've just tumbled down nice technique huh all right so with that said a couple of things just to wrap up first of all have a wonderful weekend uh, and uh, think of, of, you know, Memorial Day is important. But at the same time, do have a relaxing weekend. And uh, as uh, Tommy Jr. always says, safe driving. Uh, we need to look at a couple of things. Yes, yields. Look, the yields haven't broken out to the upside, but this is a big reversal. The uh, EUR, USD, this is the euro testing in the H pattern. Now, this can often turn into a very bullish pattern if it holds very nicely, doesn't take out the left side low, and it starts to make higher highs and higher lows. But at this point, very negative at 1.079. Look at the USD JPY. USD JPY. Look at that nice candle. This is a Chapman wave 
Roman candle so far, the day's young, it's not completed, and that just says if any time next, uh, in the next two sessions, the euro, the, uh, the yen has trades for 90 minutes below 145.20, be careful, it could test uh, the low of today. And if it closes twice above the high of today, that's very positive and it should test the high that was made recently, which is a few days ago in the 147 area. So 146.16. So that, a couple of things just to look at. And I'm going to do this right at the moment. I'm going to say, check out my opening call, my daily newsletter. And if you aren't used to my show, if you haven't been to my show, 10 o'clock to 11 o'clock Eastern Time, Tiger Technicians Hour, we go through all of these. Maybe I'll talk a little bit slower so that you can get the South African accent. All these decades and it's never changed. It still sounds, if we were, if we moved to England and from South Africa instead of America, I'd be talking like this right now. But in America, we didn't have to. Hey, have a wonderful rest of the rest of the day and a great weekend. Stay tuned for great programming. See you on Tuesday.